Why do hearts have four chambers not two? Human hearts have two halves, one to pump blood around the lungs and another to pump blood around the rest of the body. Okay, makes sense, the oxygenation step is very important and there's a lot of tiny blood vessels to push blood through so a dedicated pumping section for the lungs seems logical. But why are there two chambers per side? An atrium and a ventricle. The explanation we got in school is that the atrium pumps blood into the ventricle which then pumps it out of the heart. So the left ventricle can pump blood throughout the entire body and the left atrium only needs to pump blood down a couple of centimeters. That seems a bit uneven in terms of capabilities. Do we even need atria? Can't the blood returning from the body lungs go straight into the ventricles and skip the extra step of going into an atrium that pumps it just a couple of centimeters further on? Just by engineering analogy, I would not expect a large animal to have the biological equivalent to a straight pipe into a single stage pump. You really only see that mechanical design in cheap, low performance applications. In engineering, multi-stage pumps are pretty common due to gains in efficiency and reliability, as are collection reservoirs at the heads of pumps to ensure a steady supply at consistent pressure. The pump is a bit more effective because the artery preload the ventricles before the ventricles pump. If the heart would be designed from scratch it could likely just have two chambers, but it's the result of evolution and loosing the artery would make it less effective, so it is what it is. Not 100 sure, but ventricles produce a significant backwards pressure when compressing, so the artery act as a sort of cushion to avoid the back pressure to force pressure backwards into the veins. Without the artery there is a limit to how strong the beat of the ventricles can be. Simple answer. One side pumps blood to the lungs to oxygen the blood, one side pumps blood away from the lungs to send the oxygenated blood to the body. Each side is split into two chambers so that there's no backflow. In both sides, the first chamber fills as the second chamber empties. Then the first chamber empties as the second fills. This process prevents backflow. I have, now treated, atrial left fibrillation. When the atrium is in fibrillation it's essentially not working. In those conditions my heart was measured to be producing roughly one to the normal flow from the left ventricle. I was largely asymptomatic when not physically active, but under load my heart had little capacity for exertion. I think of the atrium like a supercharger in an engine, it preloads the ventricle, enabling much more volume of blood to be pumped when the ventricle contracts. We're like internal combustion engines if we had a two-chamber heart we'd be like a two-stroke engine that has to expel burnt gases as well as let in fresh air gas blood at the same time. Four strokes are much more efficient and easy to deal with having the two extra strokes chambers. Besides if we were two strokes we'd have to put oil on our Cheerios. It may be best to think of the atrium as a collection chamber. The blood returning to the heart is not being pumped it is just draining under quite low pressure. The atrium is weak enough to be filled by this low pressure blood and has just enough force to push it quickly into the ventricle. The ventricle can't really suck the blood in. The muscle can just relax and allow itself to be filled. Without the atrium, it would not fill as efficiently. Regarding your question whether we need atria. As said before artria are there mainly as storage location during ventricular contraction and their own contraction contributes only a small part to ventricular filling about 10, with the remainder flowing from the veins through the relaxed artria into the ventricle. This is also the reason that atrial fibrillation where atrial cardiomyocytes don't contract in unison and the artria produce very little pressure is not deadly although it could lead to embolism formation and stroke, but that is besides the point and ventricular fibrillation is. Your circulatory system is essential to systems, the pulmonary and systemic. The systemic is your entire body, so you can imagine that the resistance all those blood vessels cause needs a powerful pump, and that is your left ventricle. The pulmonary system is only your lungs, so it has a lot less resistance. So if you used the left ventricle for pulmonary circulation it will provide far more pressure than is needed, and that extra pressure will essentially destroy your lungs. So basically each half of your heart pumps to its own circulation. 
and provides the adequate pressure needed. Two chambers to avoid mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood by septum and two more as artery receive veins and ventricle gives out arteries. Also our muscles are excitable therefore artery takes the blood in and ventricle pump out. Basically to keep the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood separate cause our body need a lot of oxygen and energy and when the two different bloods mixed up less energy is generated. If I am wrong plaza correct me, I am here to learn too. You've received some great info here. I highly recommend Hemo the Magnificent. It's an older film, so old they watch a portion of it in the first Gremlins movie. But it has some very cool info on exactly this at one point and a hugely helpful demonstration. Really we have two chambers, and two confluence of veins. The left side has an atrial kick where the atrium contracts that adds about 5 to the output but it's a good bit more minimal than people think. The atria are just several veins merging together. The ventricles do the work. However your question is unclear, are you asking why we have a pulmonary and systemic circulation?